I not reluctantly said, I'd love to. <laughs> uh, why not? I said, look, actually, let me sleep on it. But I think this could be quite a good idea. With Spice Girls publicist Nikki Chapman and record company exec Paul Adam completing the lineup, the pop stars panel was complete. But it could have been very different. Simon Carl was absolutely 100% approached to do pop stars. Um, in fact, he was the person we wanted the most. And I thought about it. Do I want to show how we manufacture groups? No. So I wasn't interested. He turned us down and he didn't think it was going to work the show. So we told him he'd made a huge mistake and that when the ratings came in, he'd regret it. And he did. Well, once I saw how successful pop stars was, um, I wasn't happy about it. And it was actually making me feel sick. He was livid that he'd missed that opportunity. And I'm sure that's what spurred him on for Pop Idol and, and other things further down the line. He was gutted. In August 2000, the audition process began and the panel and production team took in a trawl of venues around the UK. It wasn't glamorous at all. I don't think you could get any further removed from the massive auditions of X Factor now. But that's where it all started. She's living the vida loca, come on, she's living the vida loca. It's uh, difficult at this time of the morning to get excited about that, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> the smile on your fingers. If they think they can sing, uh, they're either stupid or deaf. As we carried on filming and we auditioned more and more people, Nigel's one-liners just got better and better. Can some blood my feet? Do you know the tune of Angels? Nasty Nigel, he was dubbed. There's always has to be an evil one, doesn't there? And Nigel was ours. I didn't really care at that moment about being called Nasty Nigel by the tabloids, uh, purely and simply because it brought notice to the programme. And the only thing I was interested in was the programme. Despite the bad auditions, some stars were beginning to shine. My heart will go I was a single mum living on benefit. I'd been trying to get into the music industry since I was about 12 years old. I was 24 at that point, so I was kind of running out of time, really. Will you come to me? I was a jobbing musician. I'd just done West End shows and I'd just been offered a tour. You still play the best! I just thought this was another audition and if I didn't get this, I had to get the next one because it was a job for me. She's into superstition, black cats and... The whittling down process or the elimination process was quite, was quite intense. Hi, Raymond. Hi, Raymond. Nigel Lithgow added drama by placing the judges' table at the far end of the audition room. We called it the Green Mile, sort of like from the Tom Hanks movie. It's just your footsteps to keep you company until you reach the judges' table. It was the longest walk of your life at that point in time because you were terrified. It provided jeopardy, I think, for the first time. They were so scared, petrified, had they made it or not. Raymond, we're not going to ask you back tomorrow. I'd like to see you again tomorrow. Oh, brilliant. Oh, thank you very much. Guys, mate, we're not going to ask you to stay. I can't believe I'm going to have to say goodbye to some of you. On previous talent shows, the pain of rejection had not been filmed. For the first time, viewers were witnessing the raw emotion of the auditioning process. We made a lot of friends there, and to see people go and to see literally dreams shattered in an instant like that is quite, um, is quite painful to watch. But that pain wasn't over yet. The judges still had some big decisions to make. There's our band. Here's yeah. our band. We're not going to ask you to be in the band. Okay. I'm in. <laughs> I'm afraid you haven't been chosen for the band. Okay. You are one of the five. Oh. <laughs> you were down to the last ten, as you, as you know. Paul Adam came to see me. He tried to trick me, said, um, I'm afraid, you know. I'm afraid you're going to have to um, move down to London for a few months. Oh, the joke. Yeah, I was like... God! <laughs> I hate you for that. Oh, that's so right. I can only do a year. What do you do I remember telling my dad, he's like, so let me get right. You've turned down a year on tour to go and join a pop band. And when he when he said those words out loud, I just thought, oh, God, what have I done? You've made it to the final <gasps> five. <laughs> yeah, I have. I've turned down a year's work. Thank God! 
It's the keys to the house, Rock, and to the band. Oh, my God! <laughs> the judges had settled on their final five. Noel, Danny, Suzanne, Kim and Miley. Hearsay were born. And in a new age of docu-soap and reality TV, it was also the dawn of a new era for the talent show. They put us in this house. There was microphones in the teapot. There was sort of cameras coming round doors at you. We we just didn't know. There'd never been a format like it. Just work it out. Stop looking down. As the band set to work on recording, the cameras also captured the harsh reality of the music business. You need to lose some weight. And it's all right saying old Christmas was there and, well, the goose has gotten fat. Do you think I'm fat? Mm. What a nice thing to say to a girl. Kai's a charmer, isn't he? I think you've put weight on over Christmas and I think you need, needed to lose weight before Christmas, yeah. Do you? Mm. The reason I said this, because it was just after Christmas, the band were very lethargic, the record company said, you have got to do something about this. <laughs> Out of order. There's no hard feelings with Nigel. He was just doing his job. He's making a TV show. That's what he set out to do, and that's what he did. You know, he made a TV show that was absolutely not to be missed television. The band were finally launched to the public in February 2001, and their debut single went head to head with Westlife for the number one spot. But could a pop group formed on a talent show really compete with the nation's biggest boy band? It's literally seconds to go before we find out whether Hearsay have made it to number one. And we are going to wait... We all gathered round and um, we heard Anna at number two. Wait, number two! Two. Ah! We all just went, because ah! we knew at that point that Pure and Simple was number one. That was such a huge moment in my life. Five crazy kids jumping around the living room. That was pretty spectacular. You have got the biggest selling British debut single ever. <laughs> the whole country went completely berserk. We were literally on everything, at everything, in everything. You couldn't move without seeing hearsay somewhere. We had like little dolls made. We did a tour, we did another album. Literally all in the space of a year. We achieved so much in a short space of time. And so it was inevitable that for us, the only way was a demise of some, of some sort. It's not hearsay, it's true. The made-for-TV pop band has split up. When it finishes, you, I can't tell you what it feels like because, I mean, how, do you, how can you feel washed up at 23? Pop stars had reinvented the TV talent show for the 21st century. And for the members of hearsay, life would never be the same. It certainly brought me to where I am now. It changed my life forever. Absolutely changed my life forever. Pop stars changed my life. There's no doubt about it. I met my partner through it. I mean, I ran off with the bodyguards. I did a Whitney. <laughs> I would recommend a TV talent show to anyone. You've got to have a thick skin, but it's the greatest experience of my life and I think it will always be. Still to come, from Nasty Nigel to Nasty Nina. Ladies and gentlemen, Nina Mishkoff. Nina Mishkoff recalls her time as a judge on New Faces and remembers its host, her good friend, Marty Kane. This place is always tied up with Marty for me. No modern day talent show would be complete without its judges and every great judging panel needs a villain. The audience weren't clapping because they liked your talent. Pop stars gave us Nigel Lithgow, Pop Idol had Simon Cowell. This show is called Pop Idol, not Karaoke Idol. Back in the 1970s, New Faces gave us TV's first tough judges, Tony Hatch and Mickey Most. And when the show was revived in the 80s, it introduced viewers to one of the most controversial critics in talent show history. 
If I can remember the first Mrs. Nasty. I thought the song was absolute rubbish. Everybody was amazed at this woman. Who was she? What a mess. She was formidable. She took no prisoners. He sounds a bit like a goat on heat. <laughs> she was like Simon Cowell in a dress with a little bit more makeup. There is nothing remotely funny about them. Here she is, little Miss Sunshine herself, Nina Mishkoff. A quarter of a century on, Nina Mishkoff is returning to the theatre where New Faces was recorded to recall her days as the most feared woman on television. Something different. It wasn't like this at all, so I feel a bit strange, really. Lots and lots of memories that, that sort of flood back. Lots of happy times, lots of sad times, lots of tough times. Oh, oh, I think this is it. God, how much older do I look? God. Never mind, still here, and back in Birmingham. I was TV critic on the News of the World when I got a phone call to say that somebody called Richard Holloway wanted to take me to lunch. And it was instant. I instantly knew that this woman was just going to be great. She was opinionated, but she was honest. I said to Richard, what do you want from me? You know, what is it? And he said, be yourself. And that's exactly what I was. He sounds a bit like a goat on heat. <laughs> well, if anybody knows you should, Nina. Thank you, Marty. <laughs> This is it. This is my place. Up in the ashtray, like the two old men and the Muppets. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. I think they'll go down terrific as a cabaret at a gay ball. Right. From the very first show, the audience booed me. No. And I think everybody was very startled by that. And I mean, I was totally startled by it. You got love to burn. They couldn't smolder if you had a vat of paraffin and a flamethrower. We encourage the audience to be part of the show. If Nina said something that was pretty harsh and they thought was unfair, they certainly let her know. Of course, Nina's barbed comments didn't go down too well with those on the receiving end. What's the similarity between a taxman and a penguin? They can both stick the bills up the backside. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I absolutely hated her. I dislike this kind of grotesque approach where a woman has to make a complete fool of herself. She gave that response solely to get herself known because nobody knew who Nina Mishka was. And the comments were cruel. They weren't constructive. They were insulting and cruel, and she should be ashamed of herself. There is now a move to, to ban fox hunting. I think, I think that's a mistake, having seen uh, Miss Fox. We were down in the bar afterwards, and my husband actually bought her a drink with a little note attached to it and sent it over. And he'd written on it, you were after blood, here's a Bloody Mary. I mean, if I was her, I'd probably have poured it over me. Luckily for the contestants, host Marty Kane was quick to spring to their defence. From the knees down, she looked fantastic. From the knees up, I have to make her wobbly of the week. Well, it takes one to know one. Right, now... When I started criticising the act, Marty, all her maternal instincts came to the fore, and whether she agreed with me or not, she would defend them like a lioness. They have a lot in common with George Formby. He happens to be dead. <laughs> She's a brave lady. I think after her comments tonight, her days are numbered. But anyway... <laughs> there are some people who thought that we absolutely hated each other because we were insulting each other the whole time. But, in fact, you only ins bother to insult people you really care about. Tell me, what is that hideous creature you have about your person? It's a spider, you fool. No, I was talking to the spider. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what really endeared um, a television audience to Marty, because she stood up for the act. Looks like a lure.